The lights are still on and we've still got some fears to quell. Welcome to the Fear of Missing Out podcast. My name is Isaiah Colbert and this is a show where we talk to super fans about popular or niche things, what they like about them, and where you, the listener, can get started. The invisible door has been opened, and for the first time ever, we have a faculty member over at Columbia College Chicago, Suzanne McBride, joining us to talk about her favorite Netflix show, Dairy Girls. All right, and we are recording. All right, so, um, lovely guest, would you care to introduce yourself? I'd be happy to. I'm Suzanne McBride. I'm a journalism professor in the communication department, and I'm also chair of the department. So you are the first department person that we've uh, had on the podcast. So I'm really excited to uh, sort of uh, allow you to sort of let your hair down and sort of talk about more of the uh, not really businessy side of things on the podcast. So um, I know that you um, are very interested and very uh, anticipatory for um, this uh, Netflix show that uh, I, I've heard about it in passing, but I've like never really had the time to kind of get into it. So this will be a good episode for me myself uh, sort of talking to you about it. So uh, what's the show that you wanted to talk about today? Well, I'd like to talk about Dairy Girls. Um, Three different seasons now have been dropped by Netflix, and I'm anxiously awaiting the fourth. And like so many things in life, um, the fourth season was postponed because of COVID. So I'm not exactly sure when it's going to come back, but I'm really um, interested in watching it. It's one of those series that like once you start watching it, you can't stop. And they're really short episodes. So you know, you can easily watch it in, you know, a couple nights or maybe over part of a weekend. Mm-hmm. And so um, when I kind of initially hear Dairy Girls, I kind of imagine like a like farm kind of a setting, but that could be like completely off. So um, would you mind sort of going into what the show is actually about? Sure. So Dairy Girls, that's funny because you must be thinking of Dairy D-A-R-Y. Yeah, yeah. Why? But it's actually Dairy D-E-R-R-Y. Um, London Dairy or Dairy um, is a city in Northern Ireland. And it was actually the scene of some pretty serious strife over many, many years. Um, there was sectarian violence between Catholics and Protestants, between Irish and the British. Um, and it was actually a 30 year period of time called the Troubles that started in the late 1960s in Northern Ireland and also um, affected the um, country of Ireland, which is you know the lower part of that island. And finally, in 1998, um, with help from President Clinton's administration and other countries, um, there was a peace accord reached, the Good Friday Agreement. And so really since that time, um, it's really easy to go between Ireland and the United Kingdom um, controlled Northern Ireland. Um, But in the 1990s, before that peace accord was met, um, there was still a fair amount of violence. And it was mostly, you know, people, um, it was a lot of random violence. More than 3,000 people were killed over that 30 year period. And this show, Dairy Girls, um, is, you know, set in one of these cities that was affected by that violence and is, you know, part Catholic, part Protestant. And it's set in the early 19, early to mid 1990s. So it's before, it's toward the end of the Troubles, but before the, um, peace accord was reached. And it basically follows a bunch of teenage girls who have those really thick Northern Irish brogues, those accents. In fact, the first episode, it was a little hard for me to understand it. So then we started watching it with captions, um, just so you could make sure you understood what they were saying, even though they were obviously speaking in English. But, you know, depending on what country you're in, Um, or even what part of a country you're in, um, it can be a little challenging to make out what someone's saying. But it it walks a really fine line between, um, you know, it's funny because they're teenage girls and there's a cast of characters and one is like really flamboyant and very flirty and um, and then another is a little bit more serious. And then there's another one who you just don't really know what to make of it. She's just kind of an all ball character. And then at some point, um, a cousin, a male cousin of the girls, Um, comes in because he has been shipped from London back to Northern Ireland to live with his cousin and her family so that he is a part of the cast. And a lot of it is um, centered around them going to their all girls high school. So that's kind of funny because then all of a sudden this boy is going to this all girls high school, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And then one of the fabulous characters is the nun who runs the school. She's super, super funny. Um, So yeah, it's just a really interesting, I mean, some of it obviously is historical 
work, but some of it, I'm sure they're taking some liberties, you know, like hmm. I'm sure some of it's based on, you know, some truthful things. So it's not like a documentary, but it's, it's just super interesting. Um, and again, like I said, they're very short episodes. So, you know, it, it doesn't take long to get hooked and it doesn't take long to actually finish watching what, what's already been released. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was completely off base with that because I was assuming that, oh yeah, Dairy Girls, it must be about a farm. So yeah, it's, um, I've like, I'm colloquially like aware of like the phrase, the trouble. So it's at least uh, nice to kind of get more of a context for it as opposed to like more of the meme kind of a nature for it. Um, so you mentioned that um, it's, uh, how many seasons did you say uh, that Dairy Girls has? Um, oh, actually I, I take that back. They have mm -hmm. two seasons um, and the first one dropped in 2018, and then the second one dropped in 2019, right around the time that COVID was starting. And then they were um, supposed to do a third series, but it's been postponed. So I don't know, you know, there's no, I, there's no sense of when they're actually, I don't know if they've been able to film any of it or if they're holding off. I mean, COVID has been, you know, has hit many of the European countries pretty hard. So um, I would be surprised if they've been able to film it, but I'm hoping maybe, you know, if not 2021 later in the year, maybe 2022, they will be releasing the next episode. Hmm. And you said that it was kind of a quick watch because I know that um, for a lot of people, like if you can't really binge it or like if you don't really have time to set aside to like kind of watch it, people are kind of a little bit colder, like kind of getting into this stuff. So um, how like uh, relatively uh, how quick would uh, watch be to sort of get into Dairy Girls? Um, well, I think each episode is less than half an hour mm -hmm. and I can't remember if it's eight or maybe 10 episodes each time. Um, but oh, maybe it's maybe it's 12 episodes and maybe it's 12 between the two seasons, but it's pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like for instance, sex education, that's another show that I kind of got hooked on. I don't know if anyone else watched that, that there were more episodes and they were longer. Um, so mm -hmm. that one took a little bit longer to watch, but dairy girls, you could really quickly watch. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. I mean, it's, um, you know, just the fact that it has a little bit of history there and there's some funny scenes like Michelle, um, the flamboyant, um, girl she um yeah you know, at one point they get they're on their school bus going to the school and the british soldiers you know have a checkpoint so the bus has to stop and the soldiers you know have to check out the bus and you know that was a very um um tense time when when people would get pulled over it was very routine in northern ireland to be pulled over and you know they would like look through your your car or you know have you step out and, and you know ask you some questions and for sometimes no apparent reason really and so they do this to this bus and michelle thinks one of the soldiers is cute so of course she's flirting with the soldier so that was kind of like a good example of how like they found a way to kind of make light of something that was pretty serious and you know to this day i think many people in northern ireland are still upset about those checkpoints that they used to have those mm -hmm. And so, um, I, again, I'm uh, kind of a, a little bit willfully ignorant um, about uh, a lot of the sort of goings on when it comes to Ireland. I'm like yeah. vaguely aware of like a lot of the kind of the stuff that happens in like the, with the IRA that kind of happened. Like I only say that because I watched the movie uh, The Foreigner, which is like a whole other separate thing with uh, Pierce Brosnan and um, Jackie mm -hmm. Chan in it. But um, it sounds like there's a lot of history kind of like brought into this. And um, I know that for a lot of um, kind of pieces of fiction or uh, pieces of media, when they kind of go into talking about history, they do, uh, like you mentioned, they kind of embellish some things, uh, yeah. kind of like uh, the Queen movie where they kind of like mess yeah. with some timelines for things just for the entertainment sake. So yeah. uh, when it comes to, I guess, historical representation, uh, how accurate would you say uh, Dairy Girls is about sort of like tre treading that line? I think it was pretty accurate because so much of it is just very situational, right? The focus really is on, on these group of girls and the, you know, their adventures and misadventures and just, you know, the coming of age, you know, what it's like at that age to you know, have a crush on another boy or another girl and, um, you know, just navigating, you know, the tensions with your family and feeling like you really want to be independent, but yet, you know, not really ready to leave the nest. I mean, to me, it's, it's a very universal show, you know, that you could tell that same story and the same story has been told in all these other settings around the world. And I also think the fact that, you know, they don't really dwell a lot on the religious differences um, but it, what's interesting to me is that's yet another show that is true to history in the sense that we see once again religion dividing people 
you know, like look at the Middle East, look at this country. I mean, there's so many places where religion, you know, has has wrongly divided people and, you know, people use it as a way to, you know, lord over other people or to, to oppress them. So I think that's another interesting part of it. I like though that it doesn't um, kind of hit you over the head with that. It's much more subtle. And I would say really a lot of times when you're watching it, I don't know if you're really thinking that much about the history of Northern Ireland, Ireland and the troubles, uh, but you know, it's kind of more it's an interesting engaging look at a group of a group of teenagers. And so um, I know that um, we've kind of like gotten up to kind of, you kind of mentioned some like some of your favorite parts of it, but I was kind of curious, like, I guess, um, Going a little bit into spoiler town here, if we can. Um, yeah. What is kind of your favorite part of uh, Derry Goes? If you like isolate one scene that you can like sort of like pitch to people to say like, hey, if you want to watch the show, this crazy scene happened in Derry Goes, um, you should check it out. And it might be like kind of like an interest point for people who might be curious about watching it. Well, I think one of my favorite episodes, and by the way, I did double check. It's six episodes in season one and six in two. So it's like really a quick read. Or quick watch. Um, I think one of my favorite <laughs> favorite episodes is when they're all sitting in the um, they're in their small classroom, and the nun um, who runs the school, who's really strict and very funny in some ways, she's not in the classroom, but all the kids are in this classroom, and including the boy cousin. For whatever reason, they're allowing him to go to all girls high school, which is super funny, too. So they're all sitting in this classroom. They're supposed to be doing their work. And they have a very, very old teacher who is a nun. And she appears to have fallen asleep at her desk. So they're just like messing around and like, you know, and then kind of whispering amongst themselves, like, what's going on? And, you know, what should we do? And they're like, and then they kind of poke her. And guess what happens? <laughs> she's no longer alive. So she's died. Oh. <laughs> so that's a bit of a spoiler for anyone who's mm. going to watch it. I can't remember if that's in season one or season two. And so of course they're all freaked out. And then, you know, the, the nun who's in charge, the principal comes in and it's just a very funny, but sad and weird, mm. you know, scene all at once, but mm. yeah. And so uh, I'm curious, uh, what kind of got you into watching the show? Like what was kind of like your moment of like, hey, I sort of saw a little bit about this and I kind of want to check it out. Like what was kind of your moment of introduction for the show? Well, the reason I wanted to watch this show is because um, I, along with two other faculty members in the communication department, John O'Neill, who also happens to be my husband, and um, Aaron McCarthy, who's a uh, historian, a history professor, here at the college. Um, we take students most every January to Ireland for a J-term course. It's a two week course. It's students from across the college, not just our communication department. And we basically immerse ourselves in Ireland um, for two weeks. It's a really amazing experience, certainly for me. Um, every time I go, it just, you know, it's really life changing. And I learn so much alongside the students and from the students who go. And then I hope that the students have that same experience. And over those two weeks, we largely stay in Dublin and we do things in and around Dublin. The students also have like a one uh, a couple of days of free time where we all kind of do optional field trips, you know, outside Dublin proper. And then we have a two day trip, um, usually in the second week where we go to Northern Ireland. You can easily take a train, just takes a couple hours. Um, in our case, we usually um, rent a coach um, so that we can go up and then we do some sightseeing, like we drive around Belfast and and then we um, stay the night up there. And so we were, you know, obviously as soon as Dairy Girls came out, the three faculty members like, oh, we have to watch this because even though we don't technically go to Derry, we go to Belfast and, you know, it's Northern Ireland and Derry is not too far from Belfast. And as it turned out, our students, the last time we taught the class was a year ago, January, January 2020. And some of the students um, had already watched Derry Girls. I think in some cases, because they were just interested in other cases, I think they'd watch it because they knew they were going to take this class. Um, and so then we assigned it as optional viewing and most everyone watched it then. And then we were all going to have a reunion, right? Like we were anticipating that third season would come out later in the spring of 2020, but then of course COVID hit. So we weren't able to get together and have a little watch party, but that was the plan. We were all going to watch those next six episodes, you know, together. And maybe we, we still will, you know, well, depending on who's around or maybe we could at least watch it virtually together, but I hope we can do that in person. So that was the impetus for watching it. Um, 
And I, I was a Fulbright scholar back in 2012 in Ireland, lived in, out right outside Dublin and taught at the Dublin Institute of Technology. And as a family, we traveled to Northern Ireland. So um, I, I probably would have watched it no matter what, but I was particularly interested in watching it because I knew we were gonna be taking another group of students and I thought that they would be interested to, to also watch it. And so I'm curious because you have kind of like more of the uh, sort of like cultural kind of like uh, incentive as well as like kind of resonation when it comes to watching the show. So um, I guess uh, kind of coming from watching the show, um, especially with your heritage, um, is there like any kind of like um, things that you kind of take away from the show that like kind of like uh, really like uh, resonates with you or what's kind of like a um, kind of like feeling that you get after watching uh, Dairy Girls? Because I know that you uh, mentioned that you are very excited for like whenever the next season gets started. Yeah, well, I think some of it is... Um, you know, I've spent a fair amount of time now in Ireland, and I do trace some of my ancestry back to Ireland. So I'm always interested in anything, whether it's a book or a movie or a performance. You know, here in the States, if it has anything to do with Ireland or Northern Ireland, I'm very interested. Um, in terms of the show itself, I think um, what I, I really enjoyed the scenery in it. Um, you know, Northern Ireland is as many people would imagine, like, you know, there's some hills and it's green and, um, but also the city is kind of gritty. Um, and in some ways it kind of reminds me of Chicago, you know, like where you have these different ethnic groups and you have these different dividing lines, um, you know, and we're like this great rich city, but yet we're still very ra racially segregated. And in Northern Ireland, you know, not as much anymore, but they still are very much separated by religion, right? Like Catholics live in a certain neighborhood, Protestants live in another. I still think from time to time, you know, you're obviously gonna have Protestants and Catholics date each other, get married. And I think maybe it's not as bad in terms of how everyone else views that as it once was, but um, I kind of like the series too, cause it just kind of reminds me of our, our commonalities. You know, like there's some things that are universal. Um, you know, the fact that it's a coming of age series, um, humor, you know, there's some really funny bits in there. Um, and then I, I just think that um, I always like to watch things that even if I don't have a personal connection to them, I think it's really important for us to expose ourselves to all different types of shows and um, all different types of books and, and people from other places, especially places that we haven't been to um, or places that, you know, we may not, um, be familiar with. All right. And so I guess winding down now, the obvious question would be, um, if people would be curious to get into Dairy Girls, cause I know we kind of gave like a little bit of a cursory, kind of like a little bit of a history lesson as well too. So we kind of help Dairy Girls out a little bit there as well to kind of like give a little bit of a backstory for stuff that kind of happens around the show. Um, so for people who would like to kind of be curious to getting into the show, um, how would you kind of recommend them kind of getting started? Would it kind of be like, a, hey, sit, uh, take some time and like watch the whole season of the show? Would you kind of like recommend them breaking out into parts? Uh, how would you recommend people getting into the show? Well, I think you could do it either way, honestly. I think a lot of it just depends on, you know, our time. And time is such a weird thing right now. You know, like sometimes I feel like I have a ton of time because you're really not going anywhere, right? And then there are times it just feels like time is is like this weird concept. Um, I think you could e do either way. I mean, to me, once I really get into it, it's hard for me to stop watching something. And in this case, it's super easy to binge on it because, you know, like I didn't feel like, I mean, six episodes per season, 12 episodes total. I mean, what I found was like, um, you know, I got to like season I, or episode eight or nine out of 12. And then I was like, oh, I didn't want to finish it because, you know, then you're done and then you have to wait. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. If you should watch it real fast and get it over with, or if you should like spread it out so that you have something to look forward to. We'll leave it up to dealer's choice there, I suppose. So, um, I guess this is the part of the show where I, uh, kind of leave it up to you to plug your socials, um, let people know where they can find you and maybe get in contact with you to maybe organize a watch party to watch, uh, whenever the That's next cool. season of Dairy Goes comes out. So where can the good people on the internet find you? Thank you. Um, well, you are always welcome to find me the old fashioned uh, way, which is email smcbride at column.edu. Um, and then I also have a face. Uh, I'm also uh, active on Twitter. SG McBride is my Twitter account. You can always DM me there. Um, and then also I'm always encouraging people. Um, I run a local news website on the west side of Chicago, um, covers the Austin neighborhood, Austin Talks. Um, org. And so we also have a Twitter account there as well. You probably won't find very many Irish things <laughs> on the Austin Talks uh, Twitter account, but you'll find lots of cool things about the West Side of Chicago.
And if you want to stay informed on that, that part of, of the city, it's, it's a great resource to have. Well, all right. I would say that has been a podcast. I'd say that has been another fear quelled and another curiosity satiated. So now you guys know a little bit more than zero about Dairy Girls. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.